Welcome guys! I am pumped because we are gonna chase some monsters today in Monster Tales episode one. Hugo, welcome buddy. Thank you mate. We have something really, really special. Uh, back in the day, Savage Gear launched the infamous monster slug and I've been wrecking a lot of them. But now we got something new coming up, which is the monster shed. Perfect for Pike and for Xander. Involved with the development of these and I've been fishing them for almost a year now. So it's really awesome that we can finally release them to our savage anglers out there. Some really unique features about them. Yeah, so uh, first thing for the uh, new shed is that it has a double skin layer technology, um, which gives them an extremely nice finish. But on the other side, also using these baits on a live sauna, make sure that the double skin layer reflects the sauna really well. So this is super important for pelagic casting, as you know, right? So if you cast towards a fish, you always want to make sure that you also can see a lure dropping down. And because of this uh, second skin, you get a very nice reflection, so you can always track your lure. The other side is it also comes with special air chambers, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So why is this important? Well, bait tracking really is a thing with live sonars. Uh, these technologies are awesome, but if a fish is far out, quite some distance, the power of the, the, the signal from the transducer, it diminishes over time. The further a fish is out, the harder it is to track your bait. And bait tracking is key into catching these fish. Having an air chamber inside and that special skin layer on the outside that really helps to track your bait and thus allows you to catch more fish. So we got two different sizes. So we got a 25 centimeter version. So this is a little bit bigger version, especially made for like those big pike or even huge monster Xander. And then we had a smaller and slimmer version, which is like my personal favorite for like Xander pelagic casting. This is like the, yeah, I think personally the best bait on the market right now that you use for pelagic uh, casting for Xander, but it also works really well with pelagic vertical fishing. And for pelagic vertical fishing, we also designed two new pelagic jig heads. We got a very, very special jig head out here, rubber coating on the side, and it also perfectly matches the monster shad, which allows you to create a very natural looking bait. And also for our catfish anglers out there who are like, they're really finicky and worried about them detecting the, you know, the lab from yep. the, uh, the metal heads or like what other type of material you're using. But now it is coated. So for those super sensitive and tricky fish. So this is also working extremely well indeed for catfish. This is exactly what yep. all the catfish anglers are looking for as well. So we got two different sizes, a 45 gram, which is especially made for the smaller version. And we got a 55 gram, which is perfectly suitable for the 25 centimeter version. I can't wait to get out on the water today because we are right now. The water, the weather is extremely uh, bright. Yeah, it's a bit difficult, but you know, it's not the perfect fishing conditions. But then again, we are fishing a murky lake. We are fishing on a lake where there are a lot of Xander. We're probably gonna fish well into the dark and mix our styles up today with yep. some pelagic casting, which is super exciting to do, but a bit tricky at some times. And then later on when the uh, darkness sets in, we're gonna do some vertical stuff as well. Um, and because the water is so murky, we're probably gonna go for the really, really bright colors. This is a really, yeah. you know, the classic fire tiger, but we have a bunch of other really cool colors out there. Yeah, so, so also this fire tiger color works really well in this murky water. But another thing inside of this soft bait is a small rattle inside, which also can work really well for the Xander or the pike to detect the bait. Um, it's placed on a 45 degrees angle. So when you drop the bait, you can always hear the rattle just making this nice ticking sound. And the good thing as well about this bait is it has a double kicking action, which means that the tail will move around, but next to that, it also will create a nice kicking action in the whole body. So it's, yeah, it's working extremely well for like those big fish. Yeah, that, that vibration underneath the water combined with that rattle makes it a super attractive bait. And also it stays horizontal, which is really, really important because if it hunks, if it hangs crooked, so to speak, so if the head goes down too much or the tail goes down too much to do, to do towards the fish, it's unnatural, and especially on water with a lot of fishing pressure. They know they they know a trick or two. They so. know it's it, yep. yeah. yeah. Cool. So what do you think? Should we give it a try today, man? Let's head out, let's see if we can spot some fish on the uh, on the sonar, and then uh, start out with some pelagic casting, and then uh, when the sun sets, we're gonna do the, the vertical stuff. But I'm pumped, because there's some real monsters in here, so let's yes. get them, buddy. Let's go.
I can tell you one thing, you don't need to go to the gym to get a heartbeat of over 200. It's crazy. So today we tried the Savage Gear Monster Sheds. First tried some pelagic work and right now we went to pelagic casting. And look what we got here in the net. This is a beast. That's a monster. Nice! So we are using our pike fishing gear. We're fishing for big zander, so it's okay to use a heavy rod setup. This is the SG4. And this is the power game with a casting weight up to 130 gram. I really like to use them to fish with jerk baits and all kinds of baits on the shallows. But it's also a good setup to do pelagic casting for Xander. 0.32 silencer braid on a SG10. In this case, this is an SG10 300 model. Left hand, of course, because, you know, we're Europeans. And the reason why that thick braid isn't an issue is because you want to have that lift, that natural lift that the bait glides down slowly and you want to be able to control the speed. Thinner braid would work too, but then the descent of the bait is faster. With thicker braid, you have more upward lift. And also, it allows you to set the drag a bit tighter, and then once a zander strikes. I think a common misconception with zander fishing is that people fish too light. Um, if you compare the mouth of a zander, it's much harder and much stronger compared to a mouth of a pike. So having a good hook set is really important. So tighten up your drag, use a stiff rod, set the hook and then open up the drag once you start fighting a fish so you don't lose it. We're trying to be a bit picky, trying to get the bigger fish and see if we can cast our monster shed towards those fish. Um, I'm using a live sonar and I'm steering the live sonar around like a flashlight. I'm searching around and trying to find the fish. And once we spot a fish, I operate the boat, make sure that the boat is in the right position. I steer the live transducer so we can get the bait and the fish in the same line and then Hugo makes a cast towards the, uh, the zander, does the retrieve. And the cool thing with live sonar is that we can see if the fish is responding to the bait. We're trying to fish quite close to the fish because the water is quite murky so you want to give them an opportunity to notice the bait really really well. And you know it's a team effort as well. I need to steer the boat, I need to keep it in position but at the same time Hugo makes the cast you need to make sure that he's casting in the right direction of the fish. You can't be too far off, otherwise the Zander won't notice the, uh, the bait. And also, it is an area where there is a lot of commercial shipping. You can see that the boat is bouncing because a big ship just came past. So, for safety reasons as well, we both need to keep our eyes out as well and see if there's some big boat ahead because these big guys don't stop and you definitely don't want to cause any trouble. So, there's always another fishing day and there's always another fish. So, don't risk it guys, play it safe. Yeah. Small Xander, nothing compared to the beast that Hugo just caught. Ouch. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> and this little bugger came and inspected and took it quite, quite fiercely. Yes. Nice. 
Ah, just Hugo was filming a beautiful, beautiful sunset and then I saw this little Xander pop up. Look at how it inhaled the monster shed. <laughs> really, really cool. Such a good bag for the casting and I can't wait to do it more pelagic. Well guys, that's it for today. We had a good day. It was uh, tough conditions with uh, hardly any wind and full sunburst. Not the ideal Xander conditions. But for sure not. No, for sure not. But we caught some really, really good fish on the, uh, on the monster shed. Hike is on the menu for the next Monster Tales episode because we are gonna go with the new version of the Monster Slug. It's gonna be so exciting, like targeting those really big monster pike and Sean knows how to do that, so. Yeah. I can't wait for that. Yeah, yeah that's going to be an awesome session. Fat Pike, they're building up their uh, their weight now in uh, getting ready for the winter and starting to prepare for next spring. So uh, hopefully we can catch some really, really heavy and big fish on the new Monster Slack. But it's going to be really exciting. Stay tuned for episode two of Monster Tales. See you guys.